Hello again, Dr. Mintz here. This is a very interesting case. I'm going to let you uh, take a little look through it first. <clears throat> Obviously not normal. So there's certainly a lot of ascites, fluid around the liver and around the spleen, fluid in the peritoneal cavity generally. Okay, so where is a major abnormality here? Okay, the colon has a lot of edema. There's pronounced mucosal edema throughout the colon. So that's transverse colon. And as we go down, you see it on the right and left colon. And even here in the sigmoid colon. Let's see, and even down into the rectum, okay? So in a lot of ascites. Now let's take a look up in the portal vein area. So we should be able to find that easily because uh, we can see the splenic vein coming in from the spleen, coming over here, and joining the superior mesenteric vein and going off in this direction toward the liver as the portal vein. Well, there's some big honker of something in there, a filling defect in the main portal vein, and that's a huge thrombus, portal venous thrombosis. Now follow this up toward the hepatic hilum, the portahepatous area, and you'll see that the thrombus goes not only into the main portal vein, but also extends up into the left and right main portal vein. So here it is kind of extending up into the right portal vein, and then if you go up farther you see it going into the left. We'll look at that in the coronal view, but basically this is a patient with cirrhosis, and you can tell it's cirrhosis because they tend to have a relative enlargement of the left lobe of the liver compared with the right, disproportionate enlargement of the left lobe, and sometimes a nodular contour, and that process of cirrhosis predisposes to portal venous hypertension, uh, impairment of portal venous drainage, and portal venous thrombosis. Let's go to a coronal image now, and I think you'll be very impressed by what this looks like here. Here you can see the left main portal vein going up this way. We'll go back a little bit more, and now you can see the right main portal vein. And this is a huge thrombus in the main portal vein that's going in and then into the right main portal vein, and then, from, and then also into the left main portal vein. Huge amount of clot. Okay, now what, do, what else do we have? We have ascites. What is causing that mucosal edema? I wondered, could it be that there's mesenteric venous thrombosis to an extent to cause this much colonic edema? It certainly would stand to reason that would be a good cause but I just don't see any other edema in the small bowel. And to have so much edema throughout the colon related to mesenteric venous thrombosis and not have anything, really, not any significant amount of edema in small bowel. And look at the small bowel. You know, it really the mucosal pattern there, and there's really not much going on there, maybe a little bit here. So I think that uh, the process in the colon is actually separate. I think it's probably some type of infectious process, a colitis. It could be inflammatory bowel disease or an infectious colitis. And the patient happens to have just massive portal venous thrombosis. Also, from an anatomic standpoint, it's interesting here because we have the peritoneal fluid nicely demonstrating the peritoneal cavity. And remember, the right and left colon generally are retroperitoneal. But here you can see they are not, it seems. They are peritoneal. So a variant, I suppose, of normal, where the right colon has peritoneal fluid on one side and mesentery on the other. So that is not what you'd expect for a retroperitoneal structure. And here you can see there's kidney on each side. They are retroperitoneal. And lastly, this is a beautiful depiction of 
the appendix epiploica, or the appendices epiploica. And that is something that you see around the uh, sigmoid colon particularly. And these are those little fingers of fat protruding out, and they're kind of flapping in the ascites breeze here, as it were. And it is these fat structures which can become torsed, twisted on themselves, that causes inflammation and an infarction of the uh, epiploica, the appendix epiploica, and inflammatory response, and then that can produce symptoms. So it's, it's in the differential when you see something abnormal related to the sigmoid colon and it doesn't look like diverticulitis, you think, could this be an ep epiploic appendagitis? So the appendix epiploica is this structure, and when it becomes torsed and in inflamed, it's epiploic appendagitis. Great case.